Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome to Chip Damage. And today we're looking at the Good Smile Company's release of Ryuko Matoi from Kill la Kill, the Senketsu Kisaragi version. Now, this is an older figure that re released back in November of 2015, but this is one of my absolute favorite figures. I'm a huge fan of Kill la Kill and I wanted to go over this one because it's an absolute favorite in my collection. Um, just to begin, yes, I'm a huge Kill the Kill fan. I consider the series a little sister to Gurren Lagann in the best possible way. And when the series released back in 2013, I was sure to watch it week to week. Uh, when I saw that the Good Smile Company was releasing this figure, I had to get my hands on it. This being a representation of the most hype moment in a show full of hype moments. Uh, and when I was able to get it, I was very happy. So let's take a look at her, shall we? All right, to start, uh, let's get the obvious out of the way, yes, Kill a Kill is known for its scantily clad figures. I don't think it's in bad taste, but you must keep in mind that if you're going to have this on display, you are going to have a young teenage girl nearly naked on display. But if you can get beyond that, if you know the show, if your audience knows the show, um, you shouldn't have a problem displaying it. But just keep in mind that is what we're dealing with, and I just wanted to get out of the way. But let's get a good look at her, shall we? Starting with the base. Very simple base. Um... A Ryuko attaches to a single kind of foot pillar there, a clear plastic. I really wish that uh, that Good Smile had produced this with two feet uh, supporters there. Um, the single one is very supportive. This isn't going to tip over. It, it's way more sturdy than it looks, but it just kind of makes me nervous um, because it is a thin pillar. You don't want to really move it around too much. You don't really want to swing this side to side. Not that you would, um, considering the price of this figure. But still, um, it's uh, it's sturdy. I wish there were two, but it, it does stand upright. I've had this figure for years and it, I have had no issues displaying it or it tipping over. And uh, while we're there, let's look at her uh, heels. Of course, Ryuko wearing heels in this outfit. Um, you can see that gold diamond um, on the tip of each toe really popping. Um, and the gold under of uh, underside of her heels. And that's something they didn't really have to do. No one's gonna look at the underside of her shoes, but it's a nice little touch. And then it be beautifully goes from black to red as you go up her figure, uh, up her leggings to her torso, which is beautifully detailed, of course. Um, those effects, those Senketsu effects, um, these yellowish uh, energy kind of fl flourishes, these uh, separate. Um, these need to be inserted when you take the figure out of the box. And they can fall off kind of easily, so just be careful with that. They're not super delicate. Um, and as a note, many of the accessories of this figure, uh, many of what you see, many of the side effects that you can see here, the blades, um, the eyes of Senketsu on her uh, upper chest, they can fall off fairly easily. And uh, the blades on the side of his eyes are fairly delicate. So you really want to keep this figure away from um, anything that's moving or any place, anything that can fall on it or any place that it could fall because like I said, this is a pricey figure. It does feel slightly delicate and you really don't want to damage it. But continuing on, uh, there is a wonderful red sheen on all of uh, Senketsu, all of his parts here. Uh, there's shades of red that goes from light to dark. Um, it's, it's really nice, it, especially under light, it really pops. And you're seeing her backside here, which is you know fully revealed. Like I said, this is kill a kill, but let's get a good look. Um, that she has the kind of exhaust vent, these ind uh, indentations on the back of the eyes, they're real nice. You can get a good look at her glove here with the little like knuckle dusters and the wristbands looking real good. Uh, you have the stripe going down her backside with the yellow indentation, very nicely detailed. Yet again, her other side. She of course comes with two scissor blades. I display them as here. Um, they can be, you can swap the hands, these are removable. Uh, you can swap which hand is holding which blade and it'll kind of have a different display, but I kind of like the way I have it here. Um, and let's get a look. Let's move upwards, shall we? Let's get a nice close look right there. And yeah, her facial sculpt, serious, um, you know, and it has a, a very piercing gaze. Ryuko is not cross-eyed. She's not bug-eyed. She's got a good expression on her face. You kind of see this flourish on her hair, this uh, headpiece here uh, with little indentations, this this is a nice touch. And um, moving up even further, yeah, the hair. The hair is really the standout here. As you can see, it is really, really uh, nice. It's slightly translucent. It's mostly orange with some red highlights. And uh, that's what sticks out. You almost get like a, a Super Saiyan effect there, of course. Uh, you know, you really can't 
uh, ignore the comparisons. However, that red effect is just fantastic and tops it off. Um, so yeah, if you have this in your display, this, this is going to be the thing that stands out. I keep this one out on the top shelf at all times. It is a beautiful centerpiece. Yet again, you have to get over the fact or your audience is going to have to get over the fact that Ryuko is nearly naked and kind of just see to the craftsmanship on this figure. It, it is something that was worth the initial asking price of $120. However, for a few years there, this figure skyrocketed in resale value. It was going for well over $1,000. It has since kind of relaxed and come back down to around the $300 range. And yeah, I'd have to say that is a lot of money for a 1 8 scale figure. On the base, this is a little over a foot tall, uh, over 12 inches tall. However, I think if you're a big enough Kill a Kill fan, if you're a fan of good figures, if you're a big enough anime fan and you decide to drop that kind of money, if you have that disposable income, it's worth it. This is a wonderful figure. This is a great representation of a great moment in Kill a Kill, which is a pretty beloved anime. And uh, on a side note, I really hope that Studio Trigger comes back and does something either with this series or another series that was similar to it, because I really miss this. We need more Gurren Lagann-esque animes. So yeah, that's my review of the Good Smile Company's 1 8 scale Ryuko Matoi Senketsu Kisaragi version. Yet again, uh, final look right there, that's that's the pose you want, that serious Ryuko, uh, Senketsu's eyes on her shoulders just kind of leering out. Uh, this is a fantastic figure, an absolute favorite of mine, and I want to thank you for joining me in this review. My name is Mike, this has been Chip Damage, take care of yourself everybody.